Happy Sunday! Welcome back to King's Community Church. I hope you're doing all right. I'm inside because it's raining. I hope you're warm and dry and happy. This week we've got our Monday morning prayer meeting at 7am, Thursday evening prayer meeting at 7pm and they are our usual meetings. We also meet on Zoom after this meeting online for fellowship and breaking of bread and just lovely times together. But now we're talking about September. Oh my goodness. Every Saturday in September, people are coming into the building. We're having prayer for the community. It's going to be a really fantastic outreach. Uh, there'll be lots of information via email, Instagram, newspapers, flyers. There's all sorts of things. So do check it out. But for now, let's head to worship.
blessing everybody. I pray that what God has put on my heart to share with you today will truly encourage and richly bless you. We're going to uh, be using John chapter 11 and 12. I want to um, start by um, <clears throat> just telling you a bit of a story about my backyard. My backyard is concrete and um, it's on two levels and between the back of the house and the top level there is a gap and to cover that gap about 10 years ago I wedged in um, my shower door. New shower was put in, I had a spare door and I wedged, <laughs> I wedged this shower door between the top of the back of the house and this lintel space uh, just to create a roof. I'm always looking for storage. I needed somewhere to put stuff. And um, as I said, um, that little piece of engineering has been in place for 10 years and it shows no sign of wear and tear. It's fantastic. The size of this shower door was absolutely right and I've proved to the doubters that this material, this glass, has weathered better than anything else that could have been put in that space. And that's because it's tempered glass. So I've done a little bit of research because um, I wanted to know a little bit more about tempered glass. Um, and God just laid that on my heart this morning. And um, tempered glass um, goes through a really intense process to become strong. It can't be cut after it's been toughened because it's just so strong. It has to be cut prior to um, the toughening process. And then when that process is finished, it's so strong that under immense pressure, the, the glass will stay together. It, it might crack or it might be damaged, but it won't break into tiny splinters. And the glass, um, once it's been cut into place, um, is then, in order to temper it, is then inspected for cracks and imperfections and cleaned of dust and dirt. And then it's fed into a 600 degree furnace. And under that pressure, the, the first part of the tempering process takes place. Once it's been fired, the glass is then cooled and it's cooled with blasts of cold air and they're fired at high rate at the glass and just at its surface. So the surface starts to cool very quickly and the inner core of the fibres of the glass retain their tension as the surface compresses and that stress gives the glass this incredible strength. And to, to explain to you what, what God has given me to share with you, I just kind of wanted to set that out first as kind of an explanation of what it means to be tempered. Um, a few weeks ago, the, the Lord shared a word with me that, that I brought to the church. And uh, it was quite a long word, but the, the first part of, of that word says this, and, and it's a prophetic word, which is why I cover my head. And the word says, I am more than the last time my power moved in you. I am more than the last experience of my love for you. And I'm louder than the last term, time you heard me speak. I am holy for you without limits. And from the moment we were born again, our inner being was tempered strengthened, processed into who God has for us to be. Paul wrote um, in, Ephesians 30, in Ephesians 3 verse 16 about how the riches of his glory strengthen us with power in the inner man by the Spirit. And his glorious riches have never stopped adding to us. Every encouragement Jesus has ever given us, every miracle deliverance, every miracle answer, every healing, every provision that we have ever witnessed, 
that we have ever heard about, that we have ever received, cleans off all the dust of discouragement and adds to this inner woman and this inner man. Every daily whisper from the Holy Spirit, every tenderness from our Father God builds and builds inside here. And that's why our God cannot be described just by the last time he spoke to us. He is intently tempering us, strengthening us with his love. We don't have to rely on the snippets of the things we remember he's done for us. We have Jesus. He's ours and we are fully his. We are his people. We are the ones whose names are written in the book of life. Our inner being retains its tension for all eternity strengthened and designed by the hand of God our Father. So let's look at John chapter 11. I'm going to read most of the chapter and this is what it says. Now a man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, and it was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sisters sent a message to him, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness will not end in death, but it's for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after that, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. Rabbi, the disciples told him, just now the Jews tried to stone you and you're going there again. Aren't there 12 hours in any day? Jesus answered. If anyone walks during the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world if anyone walks during the night, he does stumble because the light is not in him. He said this and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm on my way to wake him up. Then the disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will get well. Jesus, however, was speaking about his death, but they thought he was speaking about natural sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died I'm glad for you that I wasn't there so that you may believe, but let's go to him. Then Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. Having said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. As soon as she heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. So they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to cry there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. 
When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who'd come with her crying, he was angry in his spirit and deeply moved. Where have you put him? He asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, couldn't he have opened the blind man's eyes, also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, angry in himself again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, he's already decaying. It's been four days. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd standing here, I said this so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, bound hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Martha said to Jesus, deep in her distress, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Martha's heart just spilled out to Jesus with more than her current experience and more than the last healing of the blind man at the pool of Siloam, she isn't thinking that the miracle list is finished. She knows that all things are possible. She drew on all the riches that Jesus had pressed into her inner being. She knew Jesus was the Messiah, the resurrection and the life, and she could proclaim from the faith tempered into her heart, even now. I know. In verse 39, Martha shows us the pressure she's under. She's a human being. Circumstances are fast and frantic. Everyone is watching. It's an incredibly testing situation. She hasn't reversed. She hasn't let anyone down. Her human reaction is completely natural and understandable, but her heart is sealed in certainty. Even now, I know Jesus can do this. She has had a revelation of who Jesus is that's giving her rock to stand on through these times. I believe many of us have had deeply precious revelation of who Jesus is right now for our days, for our times. And it's out of that we can say, even now, I know. Lazarus, come out, he shouted. Lazarus came out. The dead man came out. This is what Martha had seen in her heart. She was already full of what Jesus could do. And now her fullness was added to, it had been tempered again. Jesus went on um, to lodge with Mary and Martha and Lazarus again, six days before the crucifixion. And we see that at the beginning of um, John chapter 12 in the first couple of verses. And this is what it says. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, the one Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha was serving them and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of fragrant oil, pure and expensive nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. So the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. Lazarus is reclining at the table. It's it's easy to, to just read over these verses sometimes, isn't it? And just 
Yep, Lazarus is, Lazarus is reclining at the family table, having a meal. Lazarus is alive. He's fully functional. He is completely back to his good old self. And Martha is serving Jesus. Mary is anointing Jesus. The whole house is full of the fragrance. It's, it's an incredible position this family now hold to the position they'd held just recently when they were running to find Jesus, when they were swinging from the faith being expressed even now, Jesus, to a little bit of panic about opening the tomb. Now they're in this new fantastic position with Lazarus reclining among them and Jesus ministering in the house and they're giving refuge and shelter and a meal to Jesus. They're sharing their heart with him, giving him hospitality, anointing him with honour before he enters Jerusalem. What a new position. They've gone through the furnace and their minds were set on what is above and not what is on the earth. And here it is. Here is the truth in front of them. Sometimes we feel um, a bit wedged in, don't we? We feel a bit wedged in between what is possible in Jesus and what is actually happening to us and what we can see around us. What is possible in Jesus has eternal reach. So we stand and proclaim with Jesus by our sides that my mind is set on what is above and not what is on this earth because even now I know Jesus will break in. Even now, I know he will do it. So I'm just going to pray before I finish. Lord, I know that you can do all things. I know that. I know that you can make a way where there is no way. I know, Jesus, that all things are possible in you. And I pray for everybody listening to this this morning. I pray, Lord, that you'll just put me to one side, that, Lord, my voice, <laughs> how I look this morning, won't put anybody off. But, Lord, it is your heart and your voice speaking to us that's heard and received that Lord you will press in to your people the even now even now this is possible even now the Lord can help us even now in this situation that has gone this far and then this far and now I've heard this far even now Jesus Bring your resurrection life to this. Resurrect the sadness into joy. Re resurrect the despair and the heaviness into the lightness of knowing that you've got it in your hands. Encourage every person listening with the deep joy that surpasses everything. The peace that surpasses our understanding Lord Jesus, bring to your people all that you have to encourage their hearts that you are the resurrection way, you are the life, you are the truth and there is no other way but you. Even now, Jesus, you have a way. You did not come into this world to condemn the world, but you came to save it. Bring relief, Lord. Bring peace. Bring deep, true joy. Minister to us as we, we sit in your word, as we've been listening to what you've had to share. 
Remind us deep to deep, Jesus, that you've got everything in hand and you're not as good as just the last time we heard from you. But you have tempered us deep, deep within with all the riches of your grace and your glory. And for those this morning, Lord, who do not know you, I pray, Lord Jesus, that today will be the day. Today will be the day you speak and you draw each person to yourself. In your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Shit.